This is Penny for Your Thoughts. In this lab, we will practice using the scientific method. The first step of the scientific method is recognize a problem. So let's take a look at a claim and see if it's a scientific claim. So if I said spinning a penny on a table will cause it to land with a certain side up more than if we just flip the penny, I want to know if that's a scientific claim. Now remember, for a claim to be scientific, there must be a test for wrongness. We must be able to go out and test to see if it's wrong. The next step in the scientific claim is make a hypothesis. So a hypothesis is an educated guess as to what you think will happen. So making a hypothesis is asking, what do you think will happen? Now when making a good hypothesis, you want to be as specific as possible. For instance, if I said, hey, if I spin a penny, I think it'll land tail side up 60% or more. That's a good hypothesis because it's specific. The next step in the scientific process is make predictions based on your hypothesis. Now this is asking, okay, looking at your hypothesis, why do you think that'll happen? So if I said, I think that this penny is gonna land tail side up 60% or more, I think it's gonna do that because the head side of a penny has more mass and when it's spinning, gravity's gonna tend to pull that side down more than the other side. The next step in the scientific method is to perform experiments to test predictions. Now in this part, we wanna identify the independent variable, the dependent variable, and constant variables. Remember, the independent variable is what we are manipulating. So what are we changing in the experiment? Now in this one, what we're changing is what's being done to the penny. So in this one, I'm gonna flip the penny and I'm going to spin the penny. Now the dependent variable is what we are measuring. We're measuring the percentage of what the penny lands on in both spinning and uh, flipping. Now constant variable is everything that we wanna keep the same. So we wanna to try to keep everything the same except for the independent variable and the dependent variable. So for example, I'd probably wanna keep the penny the same. Now, for the sake of time, we're gonna use more pennies, especially when spinning them, so we don't have to spin the penny a 100 times and record that, we'll use more pennies just to save time. We wanna keep each penny the same. Now, fortunately, pennies are minted about the same, but we need to take a look at the history of the penny to make sure that all of these pennies are the same. So for example, in 1909, that was when Abraham Lincoln was put on the penny to celebrate the centennial of his birth. Now from 1909 to 1958, the penny is known what's called the wheat penny. So it had one cent and stalks of wheat on the back of the penny. Now in 1959, to celebrate the sesquicentennial of Abraham Lincoln's birth, that was when the Lincoln Memorial was put on the back. And the Lincoln Memorial was on the back of the penny from 1959 to 2008. Now in 2009, the 200th birthday of Abraham Lincoln, four commemorative backs were placed on the back. And after that, from 2010 until present, the shield is on the back of the penny. So we wanna make sure we keep the back of the penny the same because that could affect our results. We want the pennies that have the Lincoln Memorial on the back. So pennies from 1959 to 2008. Now there is a, other differences. We wanna keep the material of the penny the same, but also the mass of the penny the same. For the majority of the history of the penny, pennies were about 95% copper and 5% zinc. Now in 1943, due to rationing, due to World War II, some pennies were zinc coated steel. Now from 1947 to 1982, pennies had a mass of 3.11 grams, were 95% copper and 5% zinc. Now in 1982, the mass of the penny was lowered to 2.5 grams. And now pennies are 97.5% zinc with 2.5% copper coating. So basically with all this, what we're looking for are pennies made from 1982 to 2008. And just to make it safe, we'll make it from 1983 to 2008. This will ensure every penny has the same mass, it's made of the same metal composition, and it has the same backside. So now that we've identified the independent, dependent, and constant variables, we can perform this experiment. First, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a penny and flip it 100 times and record heads and tails. So one other constant we wanna keep the same is, well, what side does the penny 
uh, what side does the penny start on, right? If I want it, if I start it heads up every time, I want to do that the same. Another thing I want to do is if I flip the penny and I grab it, well, how am I going to end that flip? Am I going to flip it onto my hand just like that? I want to do that the same every single time. So I'm going to flip this penny a hundred times. Once I get done flipping the penny 100 times, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spin the penny on the table 100 times. Now, for the sake of time, that's why I have five pennies, and as long as they're made from 1983 to 2008, these pennies will be the same. So I can spin five pennies at a time, and I can record whether they land heads or tails. Now, I wanna make sure I spread them out so they don't hit each other, and I wanna make sure they spin for at least five seconds. And I can do this for 100 so I can do this for a hundred spins and record whether they land heads or tails. So now that we've done that, I can go ahead and put that data up there for you. This is the sample data. Now that we've done this, we can use the data to make a nice pie chart for each scenario, for flipping and spinning the pennies. Now the last step in the scientific method is to formulate a general rule. So if we look at the data, you'll notice that it's about the same, right? It comes out to about 50%. Now there is some limitations for this and the fact that 100 spins and 100 flips, it should be about 50-50, but even with 100 flips and spins, there can still be a very wide difference between the number of heads and number of tails. So another limit, so a limitation to this lab would be the amount of spins and amount of flips. We should probably do more in order to, in order to make the data just a little bit better for this. Maybe a thousand spins and flips would do it. So once we formulate a general rule, we should look at our hypothesis and see if we were wrong. So if you look at what my hypothesis was and said, hey, spinning a penny will cause it to land tails up more because the head side has more mass, like 60% or more, like I was wrong. My hypothesis was wrong. Now it is supposed to land tail side up more than heads. In fact, sometimes it gets up to be about 80% tails and heads when you're spinning it. And because there is more mass on the head side than the tail side and gravity has a tendency to pull on that more. Now, one thing and the reason why that this one didn't turn out that way, why it is about 50-50 is because Whenever that experiment was done, where it comes out way more tails and heads, the pennies were like brand new or clean. Now pennies, they build up grime, they, they start to get corroded. Now that is something that can affect our data. So the last thing that I encourage everyone to do when doing these experiments is to formulate another scientific claim using coins. Now if I were gonna do this one, I would say, well, let's do this experiment again with spinning, except what you can do is you can clean pennies to make sure that to get all the grime off and to get all the, to get everything that's been corroding the penny, you can make them like brand new. Let's have some pennies that are brand new and spin them and then have regular pen, and then have regular pennies that have been corroded for years, spin those pennies and see if that has an effect. That is another experiment that we can do using these pennies. So once again, this is Penny for Your Thoughts.